Chris Evans takes over for Tim Allen as we get an origin story of the toy that Buzz Lightyear is based upon. Let's talk about Lightyear. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new film, Lightyear. It is in theaters right now, and the first Pixar movie to go to theaters since before COVID. They've released the last three movies just on Disney+. Plus. Uh, but Disney decided, well, you know what? This is a Toy Story-related property. We gotta put this thing in in theaters, and I think they were wise to do so. Uh, before we get into the review and the specifics of this movie, I do want to welcome you into Day of Reviews. Thank you for finding this video. Uh, we do new movies and TV shows every week here on the channel, usually about five videos a week or more. Uh, and click that subscribe button below uh, if you want to get the latest on all my reviews. Uh, we're nearing a 1,000 subscribers, so it would be great to have you along. All right, so let's talk about Lightyear. Like I mentioned, uh, Tim Allen is not in this. He's uh, not really a part of this, but there's a reason why. This is not a movie about the Buzz Lightyear that we already know. This is the origin film of the toy for Buzz Lightyear. So, of course, you know, in Toy Story, we learn, oh, you know, we're all toys, but when Buzz first gets to, spoiler alert for Toy Story, you know, from 25 years ago, um, Buzz thinks he is the real Buzz Lightyear. So this is the movie about the real Buzz Lightyear. And we saw it, um, I think, in the trailer, but it says it at the beginning of this movie as well, that, you know, back in 1995, Andy got a toy uh, from his favorite film, this is the film. So what they're doing is sort of creating this new universe um, as a spinoff of the Toy Story films. And to be honest, look, Toy Story is my favorite movie series of all time. I've given all of them uh, A pluses or A. And, you know, I, I don't know if I consider this one. It's certainly part of the canon, I guess. Um, but it's it's not quite a Toy Story film. Um, you know, this is definitely like the, the Hobbs and Shaw versus uh, the Fast and Furious world. So Chris Evans is along here for the Buzz Lightyear voice, but uh, he certainly has picked up some of the the Tim Allen cadence and inflections from those Toy Story movies. He's, you know, trying to emulate, okay, well, if this was a toy based on a movie, what would the character in the movie sound like? And I think he nails it. Um, you know, other than Captain America, I haven't really seen Chris Evans doing a lot of action stuff. I've seen him do dramas, um, but not a ton of action-related stuff. So it's it's cool to see him in an animated version uh, doing some neat action-oriented stuff. Um, and then in addition to that, you've got some really interesting voices to uh, to round out the crew here. Kiki Palmer and uh, Uzu Adoba play um, sort of grandmother and granddaughter in two separate um times that that buzz is in um kiki palmer does th the bulk of the work here but to the first you know 25 minutes or so uh it is uzu adobo we hear from uh and then also uh, james brolin is here uh taika watiti um and peter zahn plays the best character i think in the movie i'm a cat lover it is a cute robotic cat named socks uh, you know, certainly the, most of the comic relief comes from that character. They try a little bit with some of the other characters. Um, the Taika Waititi character, for example, is, you know, very clumsy and, and, and sort of an idiot. Um, so they try to mine laughs from him, but, I, you know, I thought some of those were a bit forced or lazy. But, but Socks, that is where it's at for me in terms of the comedy of this movie. Um... So anyway, that's sort of the basic plot. I'm, I'm not going to really go into the details um, because I think we get into too much spoiler territory if if we uh, mention too much more. But, you know, I, I did say sort of about the, the, the different uh, timelines and, and futures and whatever. So that's, that's about all we'll get into with that. But, um, yeah, the voice acting here is great. It's a lot of fun. Um, and this is a gorgeous film to look at. You know, um, I've been a little bit back and forth with Pixar in the last, I would say, about three years or so. Um, you know, they used to have many of my favorite films of all time. I guess they still do. You know, they have so many A-pluses in their canon. But I, I think the last A-plus I gave to a Pixar was probably Turning Red, which was at this point, uh, not Turning Red, I, I apologize, Inside Out, uh, which was at this point years and years ago. Luca, Turning Red, um, you know, some of the more recent ones I thought were good, 
but not up to that that old level of Pixar greatness. Soul came close. I did give that one an A. Love that movie. But um, but this one is really doing its own thing. I mean, if if, if for some reason you didn't know anything about Toy Story, um, I think you could certainly still enjoy this as a film. Maybe you wouldn't pick up on all of the little, you know, nuggets of Buzz Lightyear sayings and that kind of stuff. But, you know, when he gets into that Buzz Lightyear suit, the one that you see on my shirt here, um, it, it is, there is something special about it. Um, so, listen, this is probably the best science fiction film I've seen in a little while. Other than Top Gun Maverick, it's the best action film I've seen in quite a while. And like most great movies, this movie is a lot of things. You know, it is sci-fi, it is action, it is comedy. Um, and it's gorgeous animation. So, you know, there's a lot of positives here. Now, I could nitpick a bit for sure because, like I said, this isn't quite up to the Toy Story standard. So, you know, I, I might mention that um, it, it does get a little bit repetitive in the action because um, similar things keep happening uh, to this crew as we move along. All right. Um, you know, that that's one negative, I could say. Um, also, you know, it might have been nice to have Tim Allen at least do some sort of a cameo or something. There's also no John Ratzenberger in this movie. He was sort of Pixar's lucky charm for about 20-some years. And then starting with, I think it was Soul. No, I forget if he was in Soul or not, but he definitely wasn't in Luca or Turning Red. Um, so it's been a couple of movies now that he has been absent from. I don't know what the story is there. Um, but that would have been, you know, a, a nice other way to connect, especially because, you know, he was such a big part of the Toy Story movies. You know, some of his most iconic Pixar roles come from th that ham character um, in all the Toy Story movies. So it might have been nice to have him. But look, you know, it's hard to fault a movie for who they didn't have in it, right? Uh, because the voice cast they, they do have is incredible um from a story perspective you know it, it all does seem to work um they they are certainly playing a little bit with the timelines of um you know multiverses or or um going back in time and, and those sort of things that i don't think completely make sense but you know this is supposed to be a movie within a movie this was andy's favorite movie so you consider most action movies do have some sort of you know, wonky logic, maybe it was intentional. You know, I, I think that's certainly possible, which does lead me to another criticism that I could certainly make. Um, and that is if this was theoretically a movie that took place in 1995, um, certain things would, would be different about it. Not least of which is the, the lesbian kiss and the, and the lesbian character. And look, as a gay man, I'm all for inclusion. Obviously, you know, it's pride month, you know, go pride, all of that. But if this movie is theoretically taking place in 1994, 1995, that just wouldn't be happening. You know, look, I, I know Disney is all about uh, the gay love and everything, and that's great. Um, but I, I'm not sure if we have to, you know, take that seriously that this was supposed to be a movie in 95 with a lesbian girl. I just don't think it would have happened. Um, you know, believe me, I was in high school and I was already out and I was very tuned in on what movies and TV shows had gay characters, which were very, 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 very few. Um, so, you know, I, I, I could nitpick that too. But overall, this was a really fun movie. This is the year of the kids' movies. I've, I've said it before. Four now movies in, in my tops here um, are, are Chippendale Rescue Rangers, uh, The Bad Guys, Better Nate Than Ever, um, and now... Lightyear joins them. So other than Top Gun Maverick, I've not given any other movie an A or an A minus this year. I've given no A pluses. But uh, other than Top Gun, they've all been kids movies. So this is another one to add to the list. I leave Lightyear with an A minus. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see everybody next time on Damn Reviews It. Bye.